going on, everybody? Poem here with Late Night Gaming. I'm with McBobber and Loopy. And we're going to be taking a look at our tier list from Spark of a B Rebellion. And we're looking at uh, leaders um, today. And we have McBobber's list here first. Um, take it away, McBobber. Tell us about your leader tiers. All right, so I threw this together really fast today, and I, I didn't really have like a, a deep prompt of exactly what we were going with the criteria was going into this. So I, I put most of these leaders kind of in a vacuum. I'm not really so much looking at the card pool available to those leaders. Um, in case anyone's wondering why I have Han Solo so high when I, I've previously been kind of down on Yellow Hero. Now, with that being said, uh, up in S, I've got Boba Fett and um, Sabine. Boba's probably better than Sabine. Um, I don't know if she really belongs in S rank, uh, not more that I think about it, but I do think she's really strong and maybe a cut above the A's. You know, it's probably more of somewhere in the middle. Maybe I should have made another tier, but um, Boba's obviously at the top. I think everybody knows he's he's crazy. Uh, his stats, he, he's got like two points of stats, probably more than he should. He, he really ought to be a six cost leader, but he is what he is. And he, he's even got the fire spray to push him even further. So I think we all know he's pretty nuts. Sabine is the aggro, aggro queen here. I don't think anyone does it better. I know Leia's popular for aggro, but if I'm going aggro, I'm going Sabine. That's But that's just me. Though she is, Leia's still pretty good. As you go down the list, I, I think none of these are going to be too surprising other than maybe Han Solo in A. Um, again, I just really like his ability. I think it's super versatile and it can be it can push out a lot of fun strategies. And I like that you can kind of he's basically a five cost leader if you use his ability, you know, correctly. So he's, he's pretty good. Um, I think as we get a better card pool for Yellow Hero, he'll his power level will go up, you know, as, as we uh, get more sets. But I still think he's, as a concept, he's very good. And the rest of these guys, they're, I think they all have a place there. You know, they all do pretty good stuff. Um, I will comment on Aiden. Uh, when I first saw Aiden, I was pretty down on her. I wasn't very impressed. But seeing her in practice, uh, she is pretty good. Um, I think a lot of it that's pushing her is that the, the blue villain card pool is very good. And especially if you play Aiden with with green, like you normally see, um, those are some of the best cards in the game. So I think that helps push her pretty yeah, far. I think there's an Aiden deck that can beat Boba consistently now, which is the first deck that probably has accomplished that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty uh, pretty up on the green Aiden deck too. Um, especially as a, as a more control-leaning player, uh, it really speaks to me. So I've been a big fan of that. All right, tell us, tell us about the yeah. Uh, going down the, the list, divers down there. Well, let's get to the B rank first. Um, Jin's there, sort of similar as Han is an A. I think in a vacuum, she's pretty good. I think her ability is quite strong. Um, she's good in draft because of how strong her ability is, and even when she deploys, you know, she's got the Boba Fett stats and a pretty good ability. Um, it's just the yellow hero card pool sucks for the most part, so. That's that's why you don't really see any good gen decks, I think, at this point. But hey, maybe in the future. Uh, Palpatine's here as well. Um, again, I'm a control guy, so I like the idea of Palpatine, but he is a little slow, so he's not. He's probably not quite as good as some of the other control options, but I do think there's something there. I, I feel like I've I've had some decent success with Palpatine so far, but we'll see. Grand Inquisitor, good combo guy. Um, same with uh, Chirrut, really. He's also a good combo guy. So these these they're these little force guys who have all these little things you can play around them to make them better, and those little combos you can do. And the the whole force package is pretty good. Um, not enough to get to like the top tier, I don't think, but they're they're pretty solid. And then we go down to C. These are mostly the uh, the play for fun type of leaders. I don't really expect these guys to be winning events or. Uh, really competing at the top levels, but there's some some things you could do there. I, I think Thrawn has some potential, but 
it's just hard to get over Boba Fett if you're going yellow villain. So I, that's kind of what's hurting Thrawn. Um, and then, of course, in D tier, we got poor old sad IG-88. That <laughs> I don't think he's going to. He's, I think he's going to be on the bottom of everybody's list here, I'm, I'm guessing. And that's about it. Thanks for sharing that, bud. Some good stuff there. Some hot takes. I think you're right about the yellow hero card pool and uh, maybe raising the stock of Jan and Han in the future if we can get some better cards there. Because in theory, the, both those characters do have some, some juice to work with. All right. Sounds like Loopy is going to be up next. Let's go ahead and hear about your leader uh, list. All right, so in the S tier, uh, there's one card, and I think that this is uh, entirely true. Uh, Boba Fett as a five uh, resource deploy, and he's a four seven, and he has an ability that uh, readies resources. So, um, as the people that have been uh, playing with the spoiled cards a long time know, uh, he is a monster the turn he deploys. I mean, he effectively gives you eight resources available very early in the game. He's a very, very good mid-range card. Uh, Bulba with green is probably the deck to beat for set one, um, is what uh, the early results show. Uh, right under there, I think, are the other um, leaders for the very competitive decks. Uh, Sabine Wren, which is a great aggro uh, hero. Um, one thing that Sabine has is the ability to always do a damage. And um, as you play aggro, it's actually pretty common that you need to do one more damage, and the Sabine tick is actually what puts you over. Aiden has very recently become the uh, villain control hero. Um, what she does is healing, which really helps you uh, against aggro. Uh, if the opponent can't take care of Aiden, she can heal 10, 15 points a game as it goes through. Uh, Leia, who's the other aggro hero, and then Churret. Um, this comes from testing. I played a lot of Luke Red. Uh, Churret is a better choice, I think, to do the same kind of mid-range blue-red hero um, play style. Because he deploys on five, he's got a cool ability that um, he doesn't die right away. So you have things like binds all things um, in it. And uh, Luke's a good hero, too. Um, everybody's going to have that in their starters and pre-release kits. But I think Churret... Uh, is just a little bit better for coming out primarily around earlier. Um, in the B tier, I did the same thing as McBobber. I'm trying to actually do the leader tiers outside of the carpool, card pool. Uh, Hero Yellow is probably the weakest faction um, for uh, any of them. And I think that that really hurts Han and Jin. I could actually see Han being a leader too. He has some kind of internal ramp. And I think Jin is good, too. When she's in limited format, where it's not a constructed deck, and you're seeing kind of the weakness of her own color, I think that she actually does pretty well. So I have her above heroes that have more playable decks right now, right? Because it's not Han and Jin's fault that Hero Yellow is not great. Um, you have the two uh, in B tier. You have uh, Luke and Vader. Both of them have uh, very good exhaust abilities. Um, Pelp and Krennic and Tarkin are all uh, kind of control heroes. I will say that these decks are good because Villain Green is the best color right now. So, um, but I don't know that either any of them uh, come close to uh, justifying playing something other than Boba if you're trying to get there. C tier. Um, two of my absolute favorite characters. My favorite character in Star Wars is Thrawn. Unfortunately, he's pretty slow. I mean, he's very annoying to play against because he can keep exhausting your guys. But ultimately, he doesn't do a lot as far as offense. And then I think the most fun leader to play, paying me to put him in the C tier, is Grand Inquisitor. Um, because he is a riot with, um, with uh, readying his guys and doing damage to him. But it's a very situational thing. Um, Hera, who I think has got a cool theme deck she runs. Cassian. Um, one thing about Star Wars Unlimited is they seem to be overdraluing card draw a little bit. Most of the cards that have card draw on them seem like they're not great for the cost. I think he's that. And then we have poor, poor IG and Chewie. I am as big a proponent as IG-88 as anything, but four health is a tough pill. Um, 
if you want a IG-88 deck, I do have one. We'll do a deck build on it, and uh, he can be fun. It is fun when your opponent doesn't know what your leader does. You know, people don't realize he gives raid one to everything. So he's good if he can survive. It's the four health that's the issue. Some some hot takes there, Loopy. I like the Chewbacca down at the bo- at the basement with IG. That's an interesting take. I I would put Chewbacca below him. Below uh, IG. Constructive. <laughs> because I think seven is just too much. Now, Twin Sons might be a different story. Okay. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and take a look at mine, and then we've got a surprise list from a, a friend here that we'll take a look at. So here's my leader tier list for Spark of Rebellion. Obviously, I've got Boba Fett in a class of his own. I think um, he is an extremely powerful card, and obviously people are making decks to counter him, but... Um, you know, he's setting the standard uh, for power level and has for quite a while here. Um, there's different decks you can build with him that are pretty powerful. Um, the Mono Boba deck is obviously uh, maybe not as played as much, but it's it's very good into the field. Um, we, um, in testing, found that it maybe loses to a Boba Mirror, but... Um, I think if it, there was a tournament today, you know, just for funsies, I'd probably bring a Mono Boba. I think it's got some juice. It can really kind of, like, blow some people out. So, really powerful card there. My second tier, um, I have Leia, Sabine, and Krennic. And that's maybe recency bias. I got to play against Faith over at Outmaneuver uh, yesterday. And I had been playing Sabine for probably three weeks, like... Hundred like twenty four seven, and was feeling like I could just you know, I played in a little tournament, TTS tournament, got a little top four on that, and I was like, all right, this is my my character, like I'm ready to bring this thing like, you know, to the to the next level, and I'll tell you what, Krennic freaking dumpstered my, you know what, um, it's just, you know that was it, was it Krennic blue. Um, or Krennic Green. I think Blue it was green. green. It was like similar to the Iden deck, but like the that extra. The big thing was the extra thing that Krennic has that Iden doesn't is that all the units get that increased damage um, when they're when they're or attack when damaged, and that just was very relevant throughout the game for him to, you know, have the attack that he needed to clean up my guys very efficiently. I just thought, um, I just thought that he showed me something. Obviously, that particular player, Faith, has been very much working on the deck a lot, so that's a factor there. But um, yeah, I think I think that from what I saw, I'd probably put Krennic um, up maybe above Iden in the control deck. Um, you know, blue green villain control deck hierarchy. But I'd probably in the minority on that. Um, I think people are pretty high on the Iden, but he showed me something um, yesterday, and I'm feeling like there was some real juice on that, and I'm going to stick to it. So, um, obviously, Leia and Sabine, very powerful, powerful aggro characters. They You have to account for them in your deck building. They will blow you out if you don't have a plan, you know, for dealing with that. And um, that brings me to my B tier, and I... Um, first card I'll comment on here was the Chewbacca. Again, um, I got a chance to play against Faith, and he was he's been working on Chewbacca for a while. And the the as the card pool has expanded, Chewbacca's um, leader ability to like create Sentinels I think is very good if you to counter aggro decks. So there's these characters that have shields now, like the Crafty Smuggler and the Wilderness Fighter that can really kind of shut down an aggro deck if you don't have a a way to actually um you know dodge arenas um so i think you know he can he can really create a negative um play experience or whatever for an aggro deck did did he run it with a uh, yellow was that what it was um yes it was a yellow deck 
and I'm not really sure what, what the purpose of that was, but it was a very efficient um, deck. So I think these characters are that we're talking about here are like projects that these players are working on, Faith in particular, that when you work on them for a long time and you figure out exactly what the lists are, that you can create something that's like pretty powerful and can counter like some of the meta relevant decks because these characters have pretty relevant abilities. Um, I've seen some pretty good stuff out of um, Churret and uh, Inquisitor. Like, you know, Wu was on that for both those guys for a while, just creating combo decks and interesting mid-range kind of stuff and pretty powerful. Talked a little bit about Aiden already. I think she's in there, but there's, like I said, Krennic's a little higher. Luke and Vader, pretty solid cards, you know. Vader won a tournament. It's pretty good. Like Luke, you know, yeah, you get the the little one drop guy, the dispatcher, you know, you get that drop and you now you're cooking for the rest of the game, you know. I mean he's a he's a decent dude. Now we've got the C tier, and you know, I gotta put my guy Tarkin down there. I mean I've I've worked on that guy like extensively. I've really tried to like, you know, move the needle and uh I think in the end like He's just too poorly statted or whatever with the two attack and like what is he really doing for you? I don't know. I'm I'm not really convinced that he's like a meta relevant card. It's just you know, he's just he's just some guy. Um, I think you've got your you know, a couple dudes in there that I have as sort of like um little investments for the future, kind of like McFaber was talking about. Um, I think Thrawn is an investment for the future. I think that he could maybe get there in the future with some other, you know, combinations and Palpatine in the same, in the same way, like, you know, some other control options and things like that. Maybe he becomes something. And then I just throw all these guys down here at the bottom, and I just think, like, like they're never going to, like, really be able to, like, maybe, maybe Jin, maybe Jin could, you know, maybe she should have been up in that C tier with the other, like, investments for the future, but, like, I think these other dudes down there are just, like, just garbage, like, just Hera, like, I don't know, what is she doing for you, really, like, Cassian, like you said, with Lu Luby with the card draw, and then IG, obviously, don't need to beat a dead horse on that guy, although I will say that his dudeness um, did beat my Leia deck with IG, like, in an aggro mirror race <laughs> scenario so he can if you don't have like any control answers like you know he's just gonna put all these little like stormtroopers and stuff like that down and you know tie a lens he, and if you don't have a barrage or something just clean he, up all the take out the trash like he'll he will kill you he, he usually beats sabine that is true yeah like he can you know there's something there you know he's not like like, if you don't have, like, some kind of... And then, I, okay, and then I got Dumpster with Leia, and then I put a Mono Boba down and just completely obliterated IG-88. <laughs> I mean, it was, like, completely, like, bounced everything. You know, give my my little 2-2 two -two guy a plus 4, do 6 to base. You know, just, it was, it got out of hand very quickly, and then you realize, like, what we're talking about here. It's like... You know, his decks, you know, IG-88, it's like a meme, right? It's not like a real, like, a real situation, so. He's not bad if the opponent has zero removal. You know, if you don't have any removal, no answers, you know, he'll just, he'll, he'll kill you. He's just. Yeah. It's a good reason to bring some removal, even if you're aggro. That is true. Some kind of, you know, aggression or something like that. Tarkin Town. I don't know. Anyhow. And so there's always open fire. That cleans up. All right. So should we pick on the list that he's not here to defend? Yep. So our buddy Vika, friend of the friend of late night gaming, um, you know, he wasn't sure if he was going to make it tonight, so he had made a list, but he didn't wasn't end up ending up able to come. So we're going to take a look at his list and kind of chat chat about it here. Okay. Well, he agrees with us that Boba's in a class of himself at the top, mm -hmm. and I think we've exhausted that ad nauseum. I'm interested by Vader in the A tier. I well, Vika's like a control guy. He likes you know he likes the big dudes and the you know to dunk on people up on the top and maybe he thinks Vader is able to kind of accomplish that to some degree. You know he's able to kind of get in there and be the big big bad. I think we've seen some good results from Vader at points. Well, certainly. So I, I'm not too surprised. And if 
if uh, Vader's not very present in the meta and Pelp's not very present in the meta, you know, people will probably start playing one health things, which he's very strong against. Yeah, so the big takeaway I got was that he we sent him a tier maker website that had S, A, B, C, and D tier options. <laughs> and he logged in to the website. Somehow, you, you can't even edit these tier makers. So he must have made his <laughs> entirely new like template. <laughs> like it... I know. I think you can edit them. All right. Well, anyhow, he he went out of his way to add an F tier for IG88 just to make sure that that his name, his card was next to the letter F instead of the letter D. (laughs) On behalf of the IG88 fan club, uh, that is a travesty. You know, we will come. We will come find you, Vika. There's a bounty on you now. Some good stuff. Any other takeaways there, McBobber? Um, the rest of this all looks pretty standard. Yeah, he's got the Chewy and uh, Cassie and Hera down in D. C is also some dudes who are really aren't that competitive. So I think he's got a pretty good handle on things here. Sweet. All right. Well, this was fun to do something a little different like this. You know, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, yep. any closing thoughts out there from the peanut gallery? Well, uh, yeah, you know, you you mentioned hot takes before, but I I thought you putting Chewy so high, especially over Tarkin. Now, now that's a hot take. Yeah, well, and you know it's interesting there, too. You know, I mean, you, you know, I'm the Inquisitor player here. You know, as far as what I've done, and you guys all had him higher than my. <laughs> you know, I I th- he is my favorite guy to play, and I uh, also thought that McBobber with. Han in the A tier very well may be a long term thing too because I think it really is hero yellow more than anything. I, I just feel like there's something to Han, right? Like mm-hmm. there, there's something there. Like I, I played that Han Green deck last week and that felt pretty good. Granted, I haven't tried it into a whole a whole lot of the field, but it sure felt good. That that Ewing reinforcement. Is yeah, nuts. I think that that card um, was the surprise from last Saturday, and we're getting pretty close to um, release here. Um, so as everybody's out there, um, good luck putting the decks together. And if you uh, disagree with us, feel free to uh, send a message on our channel or get a hold of us on the website. Sweet. Or post in the comments too. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, you mentioned yep, flame re- us away. Uh, <laughs> reinforcement. I want to tell you a quick story. I played two of those back to back in my play test yesterday against the Krennic and then and then a- after I did the second one, before I attacked with any of my guys, after the first one, he played the board wipe. So I lost like six or seven units. I ended up still winning the game, but it was very interesting. I mean, I think walking into Super Laser Bat Blast is worse than walking into Forsaken. That was I walked into it. It was like <laughs> attack with your guys, then then put more guys out there. You know, like come on, Pom. Well, Ewing's kind of doing double duty, right? Because it's like, it's putting a bunch of guys in play, but it's also pulling those guys out of your deck. So the late game, you're not drawing those little guys. So you're, you're going to get better draws. Like, it's just great. Yeah, and you, you do want to Ewing reinforcement before you attack with all your guys, too. I learned that because you might find, like, a fleet lieutenant or whatever, and you need a target for that. Just pro tip on that. Okay. All right, Truth. so I think we'll wrap it there. And if you made it this far, you're my hero. Thanks for Later. watching. <laughs>